I want to share something else with you today, um, which is part of the revelation of coming here to Israel, which is learning the meaning of the land in the kingdom of God. I'm surprised how something that is so simple is so misunderstood. And I look back of, of uh, when I look at most of what I've seen in the Christian world, the, the thing that there seems to be the most misunderstanding about is the place of the land. And I want to describe that to you and uh, try to make something as simple as I can for you today. As Bonat uh, Chil, let's uh, start with uh, Genesis chapter 12. Here we have the story of Abraham, who is the first believer, at least in, in the full covenant faith sense of the word. Not that people weren't believers in God before that, but he was the first one that God made a covenant with him. And Genesis chapter 12, this is the first instruction to Abraham. It says, and you, and, and God said to Abraham, and the Lord said to Avram, go, get you up and go, lech lecha. From your land and from your birthplace and from the house of your fathers unto the land which I will show you. And I want you to see that this is the first commandment. Now, what happens immediately after that, he says, is that uh, you will be a blessing to all the nations of the world and I will bless you. So there's kind of this triangle here of the blessing to the nations, the blessing to him that's all coming through Yeshua. But the first part of that triangle is go to this land. Now, is that a totally irrelevant statement? Why? In, in anybody's, in, in the people of the most wonderful Bible-believing, praying Christians that I've known throughout the years, it would seem to be an irrelevant statement. Why should he go to this land? I mean, after all, God's will for us is to, go, to die and go to live in heaven forever. That's God's plan for my life, to die and to go to heaven and to live with God forever in heaven. No, it isn't. That's Hinduism. That's not biblical faith. I'm exaggerating, it's not exactly Hinduism, but I'm saying it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a non-biblical mysticism that's, that's, not, uh, uh, that's not according to the plan of God. What happened was that God made heaven and earth together. The kingdom of God is heaven and earth. And in the end, God brings everything back together. And when God made the planet earth and he put Adam and Eve on it, it was a perfect place, and then we sinned. And it ruined the earth, but it didn't ruin God's plan for the earth. And God sent Adam out of the garden, and, Ab and God sent Abram back to that place to reestablish the kingdom. The kingdom is not only heavenly, and it's not only earthly. It is earthly and heavenly. I want you to understand that the first thing God says, the first word to the first believer, is to go to this piece of property. And it's the same thing he told you when he told you to come on this tour. He says, I want you to go there. There's, I have a purpose for this piece of land. Now, um, the land was eventually conquered. Let's go up now to Joshua chapter 1. This is the main section that I want to talk about today. When God gives Joshua instructions for conquering the land of Israel. Now, one of the most uh, wonderful things that we see in, in, in a Hebrew understanding of the Bible is this word land, or the word aretz. And the word land in Hebrew means two totally different things. It means the land of Israel, and it means planet Earth. I want that just to sink into you for a minute. When the Bible says the land, it means two different things. It means the land of Israel, it also means the planet Earth. And God gives particular, specific promises to the land of Israel for the people of Israel. 
But those promises are also extended to everyone on planet Earth, for everyone who lives on planet Earth anywhere. There is a, p a portion of land for each people on the whole Earth, and this is the example land. And, what, and God makes promises to Abraham and to his people for this land, but it also then becomes universalized. It's the same promise, a specific, particular promise for the Jewish people to the land of Israel, and a general, universal promise for the believers in every nation and every world for their own property. And so we have to take the promises and understand them both on two levels, particular and universal, special and general. Now let's look at this in, um, let's go up to now, Josh, Joshua chapter one is um, maybe one of the best places to see this. Now you remember what happens with Joshua. Uh, the people of Israel have come out of Egypt, wandered around in the desert for 40 years. Uh, Moses has just uh, died right before them coming into the land of Israel just in Jordan on the other side, and then, he's, and, then, and then they're coming into the land of Israel. And God encourages Joshua, and he says to him, you are going to take this land. You are going to cause my people to inherit the land. Now, you've got to be able to hear this on two levels. You've got to translate it, sort of like translate it from Hebrew to English and from English to Hebrew. You've got to translate this because what he's talking about, what he's talking to Joshua about taking the land of Israel, he's talking to all of the saints of God about repossessing planet Earth. This is the part that we need to get. This is not about taking a tour for 10 days to come see the Sea of Galilee. This is about the people of God repossessing planet Earth from the devil. That's part of the plan of God. And if that's not part of your plan of God, I don't know what Bible you are reading. Amen. So let's look what he says here. Verse 2. Moshe Avdi met v'ata kum. And he says, and now Moses, my servant, is dead. Get up and cross over the Jordan. I guess I there missed my place here. Uh, for you and all the people, all those people that are with you into the land that I have given to the children of Israel. He said, I've been waiting on this. Go Take this land, will you? He says, I want you to get this, and I want you to hear this universally for the saints of God. If there's anything that God has brought us as a messianic remnant back to the land of Israel, is that we would get this point so we can proclaim it back out to the nations of the world. Saints, wherever you live, get up. Take possession of this planet. God's plan is not to leave this planet for the devil and the Antichrist. It's for Jesus to come back and kick the devil and the Antichrist off of this planet and restore this planet and make it the Garden of Eden again. I don't know how that small little fact could have been missed by believers all these years. It's not such a small fact. He's saying, get up, come on, cross the land, get in there, take the land. He says, verse 3, and he says, Kol ha-makom, kol ha-makom asher tidroch kaf rag lechem, bo lechem netatif, kasher dibarti el Moshe. And he says, and he says, in all, every place where your feet shall tread, I have given it to you, as just I have said to Moses. Are you listening to what he's saying? This isn't a promise about the Jewish people having the land of Israel. This is a problem about the saints of God. Every place that's on the bottom of your foot. Yeah. Don't worry so much about putting your hand on somebody. Get put the bottom of your foot on this piece of property. This is a, the planet is waiting for the saints of God to walk around and put their feet on this planet and say this planet belongs to God, not to the devil. Yeshua is the Lord, not the Antichrist. And that we are, he says, every place where your foot treads, wherever you go, in China, in South America, in Europe, wherever you go, in the Palestinian territories, in Israel, in Tel Aviv, in Jerusalem, in New York City, in London, in Paris, wherever you go, wherever your foot 
foot goes, take possession of this planet, get up, cross the Jordan, take this planet back for the kingdom of God. Do you see that word every place in verse 3 is a universalization of the promise? Thank you. Verse 5. And he says, he says, now look, no man will stand before you all the days of your life. As I was with Moses, so I will be with you. I will not uh, let you go or abandon you. And he says, he says, look, I've given you authority. We have authority in the name of the Lord. Are you listening? The authority is not just forgiveness of sins, and it's not just healing the sick and casting out demons. It is authority to take possession of planet Earth. God made this planet. It belongs to Him. It's been stolen by sin and Satan, and we preach the kingdom of God that we take possession of this again. Now, of course, people's souls are more important than a piece of dirt. Is that we're not talking about politics, we're not talking about war, we're not talking about any political movement, we're not even talking about Zionism. We're, ta- we're talking about God's kingdom and his salvation. And people, some people, I remember once somebody, somebody asked me, well, you know, in the promises of God for the land of Israel and the promises of God for the people, what is more important, the land or the people? Yeah. And I said, don't be stupid. The people are more important than the land. What kind of question is that? But that doesn't mean that the land isn't important. The people are more important than land. But land ultimately, once you get enough people, they have to have a place to live. We need land eventually. All I'm saying is that the land is a much a part of the kingdom of God. Listen, you know, when healing was made popular, again, in the body of Christ in the 1940s, right along with Israel becoming a nation, that wasn't a coincidence. When Israel was made a nation, the healing miracles came back into the body. Because there's a parallel there. Why? Because in the name of Yeshua, do we have authority to heal someone's body? No, no, it's just spiritual. It's just spiritual. Pray for somebody to be encouraged but not healed. No, no, we don't believe. We believe somebody's body can be healed. What's more important, his spirit or his body? Do you have somebody saved or and not healed or healed and not saved? Well, clearly. You'd rather have somebody saved and not healed, but you want both. If someone is saved, you have authority to put your hands on his person's body and see their body healed. Yeah. Well, then so is the same thing. We have authority with the, with, the, with the earth as well to touch the earth. You touch somebody's body with your hand to heal your bo- their body. And with the same authority, you put your foot on the ground to take possession and heal the land. We got to take possession. We have authority to take possession and heal the land in the name of Yeshua. Like we heal a person's body, we, we heal the land. You take a person's body, take his possession of his own body back away from, from sickness. The devil doesn't have right to put sickness in your body. Take your body back from the devil. And the devil doesn't have right to rule over planet Earth. Let's take the thing back. Yeah. See, it's an issue of authority. And he says in verse 6, And he says, Be strong and very courageous, for you will cause this people to inherit the land which I swore to, uh, to their fathers to give them. And he says, now, Of course, you've got to be strong. There is opposition to this. There is opposition to this message. There's not opposition to a message about people getting raptured. I believe in the rapture. But there's no opposition to it. The devil's not fighting it. You want to leave, bye. The devil is interested in keeping this planet. And we come and say, we're going to take this planet back. You start into the fight. And he says, you be strong. You be very courageous. It's the same battle. Because the devil knows we're not interested in... Listen, I'm not interested in just casting a demon out of one person. I'm here and I want to cast all the demons off of this planet all together. That's what we're in here to fight. So I spirit-filled, do spirit-filled believers, do we believe in healing the sick and casting out demons? Amen. 
Well, if you believe in healing the sick, why don't we believe taking possession of the land? If you believe in casting out a demon, why don't we believe in casting out all the demons out of the whole place? Let's just keep going. Did that make sense? And he says, this land which I gave to your, which I swore to your forefathers. Now, I want you to see this. How many years after Abraham is this? I don't know. We don't have to be exact. I don't know. 400 years, four or 500 years. After. Now, think about this. And God gives the same command to Abraham. He says, Abraham, I give you this land. Go take possession. And we tell Abraham, he says, just walk up and down. Walk up and down. Take wherever your foot stretches. Take possession of it. And Abraham's, Abraham goes and he just starts, he does it. He just plays. He's going, to, Lord, I'm taking possession. I'm taking possession of the land all by himself. You know, what a, you know, seems like he's crazy. You know, who's this guy? I'm taking possession of this land. And he's, it's all alone. One guy in a tent, 100 years old with no children. So I said, kind of, okay, Abe, whatever you think, you know, take possession. But he's going there and, he's, and God says, no, I swore this to your father. And you think, you think in the natural, nothing happened. 400, 500 years later, his great, 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 great grandchildren, after being in Egypt, after being, after 400 years of slavery, nothing, come back with signs and wonders and march out into the wilderness and come back into the land. And God says, now I haven't forgotten what's 400 years. I haven't forgot my promises are there today and they're here just today as much as they were for Abraham as they were for Joshua they're here for you and me today the promises of God are not gone away with so Joshua went in what happened there took another 400 years before David finally took over Jerusalem and built the temple and made the cap for another 400 years folks this is a long fight you're talking about fighting to get the devil off of planet Earth and repossessing the planet Earth for God in the people who believe. This is a huge fight. Another 400 years till you get the time of David. Hallelujah, we got to the kingdom. Then they sinned. Everybody sinned. God had to throw us out of the land again. For another couple of hundred years, few and others, 400, 500. Another 405 years go by. Let's come back again. Few people, it's build up a few people were laughing at him. He said, like he said, a, a shuala, a little fox could knock down what you're building. He said, we're, we're believing God. says, keep going, keep going. Zerubbabel, Ezra, and Nehemiah come back, nothing. They're just trying to, and they're fighting. And you know what the people said then? They didn't, even, they didn't even take their clothes off. He said, it was such a battle. He said, we, he said, we didn't even, we kept a sword in one hand and a building hand in the other. We're just, this is day and night. I said, we fought, we fought to take possession of this planet again. And then they went out. And then it was another, and then they still, everything went wrong again. Again. And then Yeshua was born. Born to be a king. He said, where is he who is the king of the Jews? And the devil comes and says, ah, just bend your knee to me. I'll give you all this. He says, no, no, I got a better plan. I'm not going to bend my knee to you and you're going to give this to me. I'm going to kick you out of here and I'm going to take this away from you. How do you like that? Get out of my face. See, that's the spirit of Joshua here that we want to get. We'll come to back, back to that in just a moment. So now it says, um, um, let's look up in verse 11. He says, "Bod shlosh yamim atem ovrim et yarden azeh lavol arreshet et aretz." He says, "After three days." Uh, you will cross over this Jordan and to possess the land. Now, any of us that know the scriptures, what you hear the word three days, what is that talking about? Talking about the resurrection of Yeshua. He shouts and you say, three days. Why do you have him wait three days? He was trying to tell them, look, this is, this is going to happen in the resurrection. There is no conquering planet Earth without the resurrection of Yeshua. We don't conquer this in death and in sin. We don't conquer it in politics. We don't even talk it in Zionism. We don't talk it, we got, we're talking about the resurrection of Yeshua. It took his body back and then said, not only my body, but planet Earth belongs to the kingdom of God as well. I'm going in to take this. This is part of the resurrection of Yeshua. When Yeshua was raised from the dead, when his body came up from the dead. Listen to this. I hear the Holy Spirit speaking to me right now. I wonder what he's going to say. It sounds like he's saying to me that he said when Yeshua was raised from the dead, you know, they didn't know. Was he just going to be raised spiritually? And he came in and his disciples didn't know. He said, touch me. No, the resurrection isn't spiritual. It's also physical. 
He could have come up out of the grave just spiritual and gone up to heaven if he had done that. If there was no physical resurrection, if it was just spiritual and he was going to heaven, then, then, then it would have been true what most Christians believe in. That eternal life is for you just to die and leave your body and go to heaven. But that's not what happened. He took that piece of dirt with him when he came up out of the grave. Because he said the plan of God is not just spirit. It's also my body. And his body is connected to that dirt. And if his dirt of his body came up at that grave, then the whole rest of the planet goes with it. The rest of this planet is going to be redeemed and restored and resurrected the moment Jesus' feet touch this planet again when he comes back. <laughs> Hallelujah. You see, we believe in the resurrection. We believe that when Yeshua comes back, we're going to come back with him. You come down to the resurrection. People say your body will be raised. Your body will be raised, but not you. You're going to come down, not up. You're going to come down and come back into your body. Slip right in there. Say, yeah. I liked it in heaven, but I like it better like this. So I want to be both in heaven and on earth. See, that's what he called him to do. He says, um, we're almost done. It says, uh, now, the next part of this is strange. He talks to the, the two and a half tribes. Uh, he talks to the tribe of Reuven of God and half of the tribe of Manasseh who lived on the other side of the Jordan River. And they did not go in to conquer the land inside of Israel. They stayed on the other side of the Jordan River. Okay. Well, according to this rule of God here, is the plan of God just on the west side of the Jordan? Or is it also on the east side of the Jordan? Both sides. Well, if it's for the west side and the east side of the Jordan... What about on the east side of Jordan? What about Iraq? What about the east side of Iraq? What about Iran? What about Afghanistan? What about India? What about China? What about it? What if it's good on both sides? Why is it just good for everybody? Yeah. yeah. And he says, look, and then he says to him this. He says, but in verse 14, he says, but you need to arm yourselves. And you can't get your land until you go first and help them get their land. And after they get their land, then you can come back and get your land. Are you getting the point? Yes. Yes. God's going to give China back and he's going to give South America back. He's going to get Africa back. But first, there's an order. There's an alignment of God. It's got to happen first here. This is where the battle of the land takes place. And when it gets won here, you got to come in with your hamushim. What is that? What is that? How is that translated? Armed. you got to come in with your weapons to fight this battle. This is where the battle is. You come in armed with... I'm not talking about... I'm not talking about missiles. I'm not talking about the tzahal. I'm not talking about the IDF. I'm talking about spiritual weapons to come in here and, and take possession of planet Earth. But it's got to happen first here. You don't get... The rest of the land outside of Israel until Israel happens first. This is the land of promise. When this land that's promised gets taken, the rest of planet Earth goes along with it. If you don't get this first, you don't get the other part. Verse 15. Verse <laughs> And he says this is an amazing principle of scripture here. He says, after, he's talking to the people outside. He said, after you have, wait a minute, translate it. Um, and, un, un, until after the Lord gives them peace to your brothers, as it is with them, then, then you, after when they inherit their land, so will also be in your land that the Lord has given to you and you will restore it. Here's what he says. He says, after the people of Israel receive their promise, then you get your promise. If they get their land, you get your land. They don't get their land, you don't get your land. And they get their land first. You get their, your land next. So what happens if a Christian, he's in Afghanistan. He's in Kenya. He's in Canada. I don't believe in all that stuff about the promises of the land. 
Well, what did you just deny? You denied your own feet on your own property. How do you get your own land if they don't get, if the line of promise doesn't get their promise, how do you get yours? And now look at that word. He says, gum him up, also them. Also, and it says, as it is to them, so will it be with you. Look at that there in that verse. It's amazing. It says, as it is with them, so will it be with you. If they get their land, you get your land. And says, this is the message. To say to the people, the promise of Israel as the land of this piece of property was the first part of God promising to take planet Earth back for the kingdom of God. And so when you come here, when you help this to happen, then the, plan, then the promises goes out universally to every place where your first will touch. Where verse, where first, universal kingdom is verse 3. And it says, and also you will get your land as it is with the Messianic community, so it is with all the Christian community. That's verse 15. As it is with them, as they inherit, so will you inherit. And what's the order? In verse 13, it goes to them. In verse 14, it goes to them first and then to you. This is the plan of God to take the earth back. God has a plan. He has an order. He has a promise. It starts in in one place and that it is universalized to the whole planet and this is part of the kingdom of God and we are part of here to inherit it we are like Abraham walking around we're like Ezra and Nehemiah we're like it doesn't matter what it is we're not talking about military warfare although there's part with that we're talking about standing in faith for the promises of God and there's a fight uh, having to do with this now one last one last verse of scripture for you what was the name of the man who conquered the land of Israel there? Trick question. What was his name? Joshua. Actually, that wasn't his name. His name was Hosea. Let's look. Let's turn back to the book of Numbers. Chapter 13, verse 16. Last verse for today. Numbers chapter 13, verse 16. It says, these are the names of the men who Moses sent to spy out the land. And at that moment, Moses called Hosea, the son of Nun. He called him Yehoshua. Now, what's happening here? God sends a group of people in to the land of Israel to check it out, to see if they have faith. What happens back? Ten out of the twelve come back and they're complaining. We can't do it. We're going to take the land. It's too hard. One guy comes back and says, we can do it. Let's take this place. He and his buddy. And it looks like Joshua was a little bit more of a leader than the other one. And Moses looks at him and he says, wow, you, you got it right, Hosea. Hosea is his name in Hebrew. He says, you got it right. And God speaks to Moses and says, change his name. Change his name. Why? When that man stood up, more than any other human being in history, when he stood up and he said, I can take this land, God said, that's it. Call him the name Jesus. Give him the name of my son. That's the spirit of my son. That's what I want. I don't care what your name was before. Now your name is Yehoshua, which is just an ex which is the full form of the name Yeshua. He says, change his name to the name of the Messiah. The moment this man, who was just somebody else with another name, came back and said, by faith, I know it looks impossible. By faith, we can take the land. And God says, give that man the name of the Messiah. Think about that. The first man that ever lived, he got the name of Messiah, Yeshua. Why? Because he had that faith. Now, let's flip it the other way. That was why... Hosea was given the name Jesus. And I'm going to short, you understand what I'm saying? Jesus is Yeshua. Yeshua is a shortened form of Yehoshua, which is how we say in Hebrew, Joshua. You got all that? So I'm saying, why did he get the name Joshua? Why did he get the name Yeshua? Because he had the spirit to take the land. 
Now let's flip it the other way. Why did Yeshua have the name Yeshua? Two reasons. To save us of our sins. And to conquer the land like Joshua. One name, two meanings. That's why he's got to come twice. The first time, Yeshua, to save us of our sins. The second time, to conquer planet Earth like Joshua conquered the land of Canaan. That's why he's coming back. He's not coming back to save anybody of their sins. He's coming back to conquer this planet. And that's why he got that name. That's what he's waiting to do. That was just little Joshua. The big Joshua's coming back. And he's not going to just conquer this little land of Israel. He's going to conquer all of planet Earth. He says, as it was for them, so it will be for you. Every place where your foot says. Let me just summarize what we read. Now listen to this in the spirit again. What we just read right there in Joshua chapter 1. People of God, now get up. Here it is a prophecy. Get up. Cross. Take the land, people. Wherever your feet will tread, take possession of planet Earth. I give you authority. No man can stand before you. And he said, this is what I swore to Abraham 4,000 years ago. I haven't given up. It's the same plan. And he said, as it was for them, so will it be for you. As the promises are for the people of Israel in the land of Israel, so will it be for you in every nation around the world for your piece of property. As it was for them, so will it be for you. And you need to take spiritual warfare and get in and fight this battle to take the land back. Because one last thing, this is the order. First for them, then to you. If to them, then to you if not to them then not to you this is what the spiritual battle is all about in these end times Yeshua is coming back not to save sinners he's coming back to take authority as creator as king to take possession back of planet earth which he created in the first place hallelujah do you want to be part of that let's end it up let's stand up and let's be those people Hallelujah. I want you to hear this, that those, Moses rebuked those people, well, Joshua at this point. He said, now don't, now don't you let them go in there and take that loan. You get in there with them. He said, if you don't go in there with them, you're not going to get your land. So just as a positive encouragement, let's hear this in the negative way. You don't get in there and fight this fight with the people of Israel. You're not going to get possession of your land. They get it, you get it. They don't get it, you don't get it. He said, get yourself armed. Let's get in there and let's take possession of it. Hallelujah. Are you with that? Do you want that authority? Do you want that spirit of Joshua? Hallelujah. Father, we receive right now.